What's up, world? It's your boss, International Zoe, here in Copacabana. Copacabana Beach. Chilling at uh, Bahaka 49. Uh, finally got to meet the brother in person. It's Jay Clyde. For, for those that may not know, fellow traveler, uh, content creator. Um, tell them where you're from, Jay. I'm originally from Mississippi, but now I live in Tampa, Florida. Clearwater, Tampa, Florida, Tampa Bay. You see he has a, a well, it's, it's a little bit of different Southern drawl than what you're used to. Then he got a distinctive voice, so uh, when you meet him or hear him, you'll know like, that's Jay Clyde. Right, right, <laughs> that's, that's happened a couple times. That's happened a couple times out here. <laughs> uh, so you said you from, originally from Mississippi. And uh, then you, now you currently live in Florida. Yeah, I'm from Mississippi. Did um, you live any other place? I went to college in Alabama. So okay. I went to the University of Alabama in Tuscaloosa. Uh -huh. So once I graduated from there, I moved to Tampa. I've been in Tampa since 2004. Okay. And what did you study in school? What'd you Broadcasting. Broadcasting. <laughs> now, what attracted you to that? Did you, did you, always have a passion for it or did you it happened you know maybe you changed your, your major while you were there well I started out as a journalism major just sports journalism and then I just switched it to broadcasting and to be honest with you I changed it to broadcasting because I don't like math and I only needed one math class to get a degree in broadcasting uh -huh. so I, I switched it to um, broadcasting just because I just had to take one math class so <laughs> it wasn't even a big story where I just always dreamed of being some big time director or something right and I guess that's evident because I don't work in anything close to broadcasting right now so <laughs> YouTube is about the closest thing I got to using my degree <laughs> okay so what did you do after you graduated from school? Well, I moved out to Tampa. I got my job out there. I'm still with the same company. I've been with the same company since 2004. Mm -hmm. So I work in, um, in underwriting, underwriting personal auto, homes, that type of thing. Underwriting insurance. Yep, to insurance be exact. underwriting, yep. All right, dope. So what inspired you to travel and when did you start traveling? Well, I've always been interested in traveling in different places. I actually got a, a minor, my minor in college, I got two of them, and one of them is in geography. So I've always been interested in geography and just like different places and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So as far as traveling, I always traveled. I, um, of course, a lot of different places in the United States. I traveled to, like my family, like we always take family trips. And then I was also an athlete in college, so I did a lot of traveling there when I was at Alabama. And then, uh, what did you do? Is what track what and field? Track and field. Yeah, I did track and field. Mm -hmm. So we did a lot of traveling with that. And then once I, the international travel, probably started around when I was about 14. Went to the Bahamas, family trip. Like my families, we would go on like family vacations every two years or so. Right. My first time coming to Brazil was actually on a family trip, so it wasn't even on anything crazy. It was like we were just doing a group trip planning via email with just different city ideas, and like everybody came up with Rio de Janeiro. So it was about 13 of us, mom, dad, aunts, uncles. We came out here to Rio de Janeiro in 2007, staying right across the bay over there in Niterói. And from that point on in 07, that's when everything changed. I just started traveling every year after that. It's, I caught the bug at that moment. Well, shout out to your family for, you know, being able to travel at that time. You know, not everybody is in a position to travel, as, especially as a family, and, and get out there on the road. Right. I didn't have that um, opportunity. You know, I had to start traveling on my own when I got into my other interests and stuff like that. Right, right. So, when did you start traveling on your own and what's the first country that you visited? I started traveling on my own. Like I said, I went on a family trip in 2007. So I started traveling on my own. In 2008, I came back here. <laughs> and since 2008, it's been <laughs> nonstop. But if you, I've been in Nidderoy. If you stay in Nidderoy, mm -hmm. you don't really get a glimpse of what Brazil is right. in, in regards to Rio and Copacabana. Right. But 
I don't know, would, did you look across the water with some binoculars or something and be like, yo, I need to get over there? So basically what happened, because like we said, that was in 2007, so that was before, before the whole Google and YouTube and all that, so I used uh -huh. to just be on like different little search engines back then, like Alta Vista and stuff like that, uh -huh. just searching like different types of forms, just trying to see what was going on there, because I didn't know anything about Rio. Mm -hmm. But the place that we had in Niederoy, it was kind of like in the hills. It was a house in the hills, so I could see across the bay, so I could see Copacabana, I could see. And I knew like about Copacabana through my research. So I, um, we had a driver or whatnot, so we um, would catch the driver. He would bring us over here to sightseeing. Different oh, so he did bring y'all. Yeah. So yeah. I guess he brought y'all over this way to see. Yeah, he brought us over the, this way. The Christ, the Redeemer, and stuff right, like that. Right. So okay. we were able to come to Copacabana and all that with our uh -huh. driver. But yeah, it's it's like you said, like you could get the binoculars because we had like a little pool at the house. Right. Get down. Yeah, don't worry about that. Is it on? Yeah, it's still okay. Still. It's, I just watch it from there. Got gotcha. it. stops or something. So yeah, so we had a um, so the driver would bring us over here, but yeah, I could see it from our house. I could see Copacabana from the little deck at the house. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so you come back in 2008 solo trip. What's it like? What's 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 what does it do to you? Like, well, you know how it is. You come here the first time, you fall in love with the place, and you know how you go back and try to tell all your friends about it and. It's kind of hard to explain. You have to be here. So I'm telling all my friends, and of course, they all like, yeah, next time you go, I want to go. So when I decided to come back the next year, it started at like six or seven guys, and it dwindled all the way down to just one. So I came out here with my best friend from Mississippi, and he was my road dog for the next six years or so, just coming out here to Rio. And that's what the problem was. I got hooked on Rio, so I didn't even get a chance to explore that many other countries because uh -huh. I just kept coming back here every year. You're not the only one. I, I hear that similar story. Now, how many countries have you been to in total, would you say? I've been to Brazil, Canada, Mexico, Jamaica, Dominican Republic, Colombia. Um, did I say Bahamas? Bahamas. Yeah. I think that's all I've been to. And what's your favorite? What's your top top three? Let's say. I would say Brazil's number one. Uh -huh. Colombia's number two. I would probably say Mexico's number three. Mexico. Number because three. I love I love Mexican food. Like that's my favorite food next to Italian food, uh -huh. so you can get the, the authentic Mexican food there. So like, I, I, I'm cool with Mexico. Plus it's close to Florida, mm -hmm. so I can get the Mexico, I can get the Mexico in an hour. Right. So like, Mexico's cool with me. So when you were coming here, you experienced Club Help and things like that? I was here during those early days. Uh -huh. yeah. So I was, I was able to experience it. Mm -hmm. My first trip in 07, and then I think, I want to say maybe in 08 or 09 or something, right. I was able to. How much has uh, Brazil changed over that time span, in your opinion? The Rio, let's say. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely, it's definitely changed. I wouldn't say it's changed for the worse. It's just evolved. Mm -hmm. You got the adapt, but it's, it's definitely different. What's going on now? It's definitely different, uh -huh. but um, I wouldn't say it's changed that much. I mean, some of the people that's been here, coming here for a while, they've noticed it, but it's, I would consider it a subtle change. I wouldn't say it's anything drastic. The changes right just depends on what you're trying to do right um what would be your suggestions to someone visiting uh, Brazil a first time let's say in regards to what specifically uh okay I, the common questions would be like I get is it safe mm -hmm. where should you stay mm -hmm. uh, what is there to do okay I mean as far as safety I mean of course you got to be on guard Anytime you're traveling, or even if you're back at the crib, you gotta be on guard and be aware of your surroundings. But, I mean, I was just talking to my boy, Grego, and, I mean, there's police out everywhere out here yeah. in this tourist area in Copacabana. So, I mean, you feel relatively safe as long as it's not, like in the daytime, I don't I don't feel that it's unsafe at all. Right. At nighttime, you need to be a little bit more aware, but the safety part, I don't, I don't really think it's a problem. Now, once you go outside the tourist areas, it might be a little bit more sketchy. Right. But as far as places to stay, if you're a first-timer, 
specifically for first timers, I would probably tell them to stay in Copacabana or Ipanema, right. just because it's just because of the ease of access to the the most popular beach areas here. Right. And you got everything that you need right here, walking distance, like right. pharmacies and grocery stores and all. It's a little easier, it's first timer. Everything that you're probably trying to do is right here for you. Once you start coming out here a little bit more, then you can start branching out to places like Baja Tijuca, things like that. But as a first time, I would probably tell to stay in Copacabana or Ipanema. I, I would say that there has to be some form. It is some danger. And I'll say that because of this. I think as a tourist, a foreigner, I think we um, we underestimate the violence and we is out of ignorance because we haven't experienced it, most of us, mm -hmm. so we don't fear it mm -hmm. and we don't really acknowledge that it's there. Right. And just let me give you an example when I realized that just recently. Uh, my boy is here and he got he had like two little gold chains. And when we were in uh, one club, the guy said, yo, tell your boy to put his chains in. He's mm -hmm. like, this, they'll rob him, it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. And then even the other night when we were at All In, mm -hmm. the lady at the door, she said, when we came outside, she was like, Tell him to put his chains in. And she said, how y'all going home? We was like, we're going to get an uh, Uber. Mm -hmm. She's like, well, stay right here in front of the club right. and, and get the Uber. Wait till the Uber comes. Don't move from here. So, and I don't think they're doing that out of, to, to make us fear. They're, it's out of concern. Right, right. That's so, true. and I think they do that because they know the real. Mm -hmm. and we haven't experienced the real, so we don't know the pain of it. Right. You know, like, even like the sister I interviewed the other day, she... She said she got robbed at gunpoint. You know what I mean? So it definitely happens. It definitely happens. Yeah. I, I've I've seen. I've I witnessed a couple times just here in Copacabana. Mm -hmm. Like um, one time I was walking just right out here, Copacabana, mm -hmm. daytime like now, and like little kid ran up, and there was like an older couple walking in front of me, maybe about 10, 15 feet. Right. They ran up and took the yeah. old lady's chain, chain and took off running. Yeah. So I, seen <laughs> I also seen a time too, um, I was over in Copacabana, over mm -hmm. on the next street over, Nosa Senora, and I saw a kid, he took took a guy's cell phone and took out running, but I walked two blocks later, the police had caught up with the kid and they was giving him the business in the back of the truck. Right. So I mean, you have like little, as far as like little petty things around here, like mm -hmm. chain snatching, phone, phone snatching, that type of thing that happened. I haven't seen like anybody like in this Copa area right. getting drawn down on like robbed like that, like in right. some other places. So as far as the safety, like the little petty crimes. Petty thieves. Type. Yeah, like petty crimes, yeah. Now, like I said, you go in some other parts of Rio, it's, it's getting down like oh, that. Yeah, but yeah, most, yeah. most people that's coming out here, they're not going to those parts right. anyway. So they were not really going to experience those. So like you go to some of these wrong areas and wrong favelas, yeah, you you have some problems. I agree with that. Um, I wanted to ask you, now where are you staying? In the United States? In the United States, but you also are a big component of traveling to uh, your channel too. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about that in a minute, mm -hmm. to Colombia. Right. Yeah. Tell me about Colombia and when you start going there and you spend more time there, would you say? Right, yeah. Okay, yeah. let's talk about Colombia. Yeah, I live in Tampa, Florida, and um, which you know is it's great to live in Florida when you're traveling to the Caribbean and South America and Central America. So yeah. living in Florida is, is clutch with that as far as time to get there and prices. And um, to answer your question as far as Colombia, yeah, I started going to Colombia in May of 2019, and I've probably been to Colombia close to 20 times now. I've been to Rio 25 times. I've been to Rio 25 times since uh -huh. 2007. Right. I've been to Colombia close to 20 times since 2019. So, <laughs> uh, how do you compare the two? I don't really like comparing countries. I mean, like, what are the things you like about Colombia that are different from Brazil? To be honest with you, the reason why I made the switch, because I still love it here, like Brazil is still number one, but the reason why I made the switch, is like I said, it's it's closer to the United States. So I can get to Columbia from Florida in three hours, from Orlando or Fort Lauderdale, I can get there in three hours. As far as things to do, it's way more things to do here in Rio de Janeiro. 
But I just like Columbia, man. It's, I feel like I'm on vacation when I'm here. Like, we out at the beach right now, chilling, drinking. Yeah. When I'm in Columbia, it feels like it's just more, like, Medellin specifically. Mm -hmm. It feels like I'm more, like, at home just chilling. I don't... I don't feel the need because on the first trips I went out and did all the sightseeing right. you know, in Medellin. It's not that many different um, sites and stuff to see. So once you do the main things like Guadalupe and Comuna 13, it's not really that much after that. Mm -hmm. So I just go there, man, just to relax and chill a lot of the country. My type of women is in Medellin. I like Paisas. Yeah, I know that's hard to say why we're looking at all this right now <laughs> at the beach. There's some similarities. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah, but no, nah, it's, it's, it's more relaxing there for me. Even though, even though your chances of getting robbed in Medellin is, is way higher, is way higher, but no, nah, I just be chilling when I'm there, man. So, so when you say your type of woman is Paisa, mm -hmm. what, what is it about the Paisa? Is it a, is it physical? Is it, um, uh, the personality wise? Like, what is it about that? I would probably Paisa. say a little bit of both, like mm -hmm. physical, like physically, like I like the the fair skin with the long black hair. Talk uh -oh. about those specific Sister's coming types. at you. I know. <laughs> about those, those types of pieces. Um, like I said, it's a little bit, as far as the language, you know, we got Portuguese down here in Brazil. So I was I was studying the Portuguese and whatnot. My Portuguese was, it was okay. But now since I've been going to Colombia, Medellin every month, dealing with Spanish more. So, you know, all of us in the United States, you hear more Spanish, depending on where you live. I know you're from New York, so you probably hear like some yeah, Spanish I, 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 should, I should know it yeah. more than I do, but we know I wasn't paying attention at that time. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> if, if, even, if we, even if we aren't studying it, like I live in Florida, you're in New York, so yeah. you're going to hear Spanish because like Florida is pretty much like a little Spanish country in itself. Right. So you're going to know more Spanish words. So it's a little bit more Right. Comfortable as far as the language, like so. I'm okay as far as basic things, basic speaking and conversation in Spanish. So I would definitely say the the Spanish helps more mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with the, um, going to Colombia. Mm -hmm. The paisas, I like that. But like I said, as far as things to do and just chilling, I, I love it here. Real though, and that's why I always make a point that I'm always coming here. Okay. So let's uh, talk about. The channel, what inspired you to do your YouTube channel? And it's, it's J. Clyde yeah. on YouTube. What yeah, inspired so, that? So basically, I don't even really consider myself a content creator. This is how my YouTube channel started. Because if you look at the create date, the create date was like 2008. Like when I, after I came to Brazil the first time, I didn't have the forward vision like how it is now where everybody's on YouTube. I wish I would have. I probably would have been like king of Brazil right now. Uh -huh. So like I created the channel. <laughs> so I, I created the channel solely because anytime I would go on my travels, I would have family that would just ask for photos and videos and stuff like right, that. Right. So instead of me just posting on Facebook or something like that, I was like, I'll just throw it all on YouTube mm -hmm. just to catalog it so I can easily send a link out if you want to see like, hey, this is right. where I was at. So I, I created it solely as a place to catalog videos just to easily send to right. family. Mm -hmm. But like, I didn't even, I had the channel, I had the channel for like 10 years before I uploaded anything. I created it in 08. Right. And I didn't upload my first video until like 2018. So I didn't even create it with intentions of trying to make money or anything like right. that. And a lot of times whenever I'm out, I'm not even getting footage. Like I was out last night. <laughs> I don't even think I pulled my camera out to get any footage. I just be caught up in the moment, man. So yeah. I miss a lot of opportunities to get footage. I'll be honest with you on that. I agree. I try to stay in, I guess, work mode. And in, I try to stay in work mode and, and enjoy my time, but it's hard because sometimes I'm like, damn, I should have got that. Now I, I missed the opportunity. Right. So I definitely know how that is. And sometimes I feel like it hinders my uh, enjoyment sometimes because I'm thinking, uh, well, I need to do something. I need to create something. I need to show something new. Right. I, I need a concept and an idea today. You right, know? right, and right. So I, it's like half of my time is spent um, trying to give people something mm -hmm. to enjoy or express what I'm enjoying. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you're definitely on on the fence about that. Right. You know, right. and I see you do like a lot of uh, 
like uh, where you stay in yeah. reviews more than anything yeah. else. Yeah. Why so, is that easier for you to do? Yeah. So basically, the reason why I did that because what you talk about most of my videos are just like walkthroughs of the Airbnbs where I stay, mm -hmm. and the reason why I did that. It's because I know a lot of times, like, you know, if you go to Airbnb or something like that, you'll see the photos, but, like, a lot of times, fellas, they want to see, or people in general want to see, like, what the place actually looks like. Right. So I'll just do, do like, the walkthroughs of the Airbnbs just so you can get a feel of the Airbnbs. And like I said, um, I always watch, I think his name is, like, Passport Heavy. Is it mm -hmm. Jabril? Yeah. So he would always go to, like, different places, and he would have, like, like... <laughs> very nice places where he was staying that might right. be out of a lot of people's budgets. Yeah. So like, I was like, shout out to that. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, let me just show some, uh, some Airbnbs. There's more in the, you know, the regular working mid range. Guys. Yeah. The mid range schedule. So I was like, I'm not yeah. going to show you the, the top tier. That's $900 a night. I'm right. not going to show you the $20 a night. I was yeah. like, I'll show you what the, the everyday working guy is working with. Right. So, that's why I created that right there. Not with the production value that he has, but right. that's kind of why I just show the Airbnbs, man. Just to show fellas like what options it is out there to yeah. get like spots to and, stay. And that's a, that's always good information because when you go in somewhere, you always blindsided. it. Where to stay? You don't. You're not sure where exactly to stay to be close to the action. You know, like sometimes I've stay, I booked a spot, and it's hard. I don't think uh, Airbnb does a, g a good enough job of really letting you know where the place is, especially when they hide it from you until yeah. you book. And yeah. then even then, you don't really know where you are. If you're not familiar with the area, you still don't really know where it is. So That's true. when you can get some information online of it's close to this, it's walking distance from that. But I think even Booking.com does a better job mm -hmm. of that than Airbnb. Yeah. You know, so... And, and man, it, it, when you miss, you miss, man. Because I've literally just said, I'm going to eat that price. I, I booked the wrong area. Mm -hmm. I got to get somewhere else. Right. I'm not traveling 20 minutes to get to the main areas. Right. You know what sure. I'm saying? So to provide that is definitely important. And I do some of those videos too, but I kind of fell back a little bit because people want too much information sometimes. That's, yeah, that's true. I put it up there, and then they want more details, and they want me to. And I'm like, <laughs> and then I feel like, most places don't appreciate you sending business their way. And it's not that I don't want to help the people, but, you know, I've sent people to a lot of places and maybe one or two of them might reward me in some yeah, way. Yeah, it's hit So it's like, I don't want to like be pushing people towards somebody's Airbnb and they're not rewarding me That's in true. Any, any way. Yeah, it's hit or miss. I, I found that to be hit or miss yeah. too. Like I said, like, I'm not going to say I haven't ever had any issues where someone were like, take it down. But like I said, it's, it's hit or miss with the, the appreciation that they right. they give back on something. Now my members, mm -hmm. I will give them the information. I'll take the extra time to maybe send them a link or something mm -hmm. because there's some form of conversation. And I'm like, there's enough information in the video for you to figure it out. That's true. So That's I true. feel like I already done my job. That's you know what true. I'm saying? So anything extra, you know what I'm saying? I don't really, and then I don't want to go back. I don't want to look at my list of, of, of favorites. You know, right. it's, any extra work is extra work. Right, you know what right, I'm saying? Right, right. Yeah, I'm not trying to do any extra work. Like yeah. I said, I don't get, I'm not monetized or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm just doing everything just for right. informational purposes for everybody. But no, I, I agree with you on that. Right. So what's the future look like for, for J. Clyde? You got any plans for the future with the channel? You know? I mean, and I can I can disclose it to you. I was planning on going to Russia in July. Right. <laughs> I was planning on going to Russia. I hadn't really told anybody about it. I was planning on going to Russia in July, Moscow and St. Petersburg. But due to what's going on in the news right now, I would not be going to Russia in yeah. July. <laughs> So I'm just trying to think, like, I know I'm going to San Andreas, Colombia in April. Check that out. Get a little Colombian beach action there. Yeah. Because I don't really want to go to Cartagena. I want to go to San Andreas and check that out. But, yeah, as far as other countries, I haven't decided yet. Because, yeah, like I said, this this whole thing with Russia, that kind of threw a, a wrinkle in me trying to do my... That was going to be my change-up. Right. That was going to be my change-up. That's up. a big difference. What's, what's, yeah. what's your... Uh a few countries that you you were looking forward to visit, that you want to visit, that you haven't been to before. 
One was Russia. Mm -hmm. I like soccer, so I definitely want to go to Europe for some soccer games. I haven't had that experience. I went to a soccer game before in um, in Medellin. Been there a couple times to some soccer games, but I definitely want to go to Europe to experience like some of the bigger, like, like Barcelona, Barcelona and stuff like that, Paris. Paris. Germain, yeah. yeah, I want to check some of those games out for sure. So I'm not really into Europe like that, but if I go to Europe, it's it's going to be on specifically like to check out some soccer matches because that's. I definitely have that on my bucket list. Right. So I'll definitely do that. And you wear a lot of jerseys. You ain't got one on today. I don't have one on today. Yeah, that's that's my little that's my little stamp. So yeah, I got yeah. I got a lot of different soccer jerseys, man. Right. I got I probably got about 30 in the collection. Right. I got a new one. I unveil sometime this week. But yeah, right. I got I like the soccer jerseys, man. So if people want to contact you, tell them where they can contact you. It's all the same name on um YouTube, it's J Clyde, Instagram, it's J Clyde. Twitter, it's J. Clyde. It's all the same, right. so it's and, there. And J. Clyde, um, I was looking forward to meeting him because he's always, when I go live, he's always in there. He's always uh, helping me out, saying something positive. You Sometimes, know what I'm saying? Most of the time. Checking the trolls out. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I was like, yo, this is good, brother. I watch his stuff. Um, we've been hanging out for the last few days, having a good time. And um, I want y'all to definitely check out his channel. Uh, lastly, why'd you choose the name? It's J. Clyde. Well, one of my nicknames is J. Clyde. So, okay. you know, when everybody was creating the whole Twitter and Instagram, they were doing like it's or I'm. So right. I just did it's J. Clyde. It fits perfectly. So yeah. that's where that name came from. I don't know where J. Clyde came from because my name is Jeremy and my middle name is not Clyde. Right. So I don't know where that came from. <laughs> it's a cool name, though. Right, right, right. It rolls off your tongue and you'll right. remember it. You ain't like got to say, what's your name? What's your name again? Right. So that, that became my brand. It's J. Right. Clyde. So I'll work with it. It sounds good. All right. Well, check the brother out. It's my pleasure getting a moment to ch chop it up with him out here in Rio. I knew we was going to connect sooner or later. We did. Oh, yeah. We hung out, had some good times. And, um, peace. Thanks for your time, bro. I right, appreciate it now. All right, I'm going now. One.